Let's get started, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll now move on to the Harrisburg City Council Special Legislative Session. Today is Tuesday, August 13, 2019. I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.45 p.m. Mr. Petrosky, please do the roll call. Mr. Allett? Present. Ms. Bowers? Present. Ms. Daniels? Here. Ms. Green? Present. Mr. Madsen? Here. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Here. And Mr. Majors is excused today. Moving on to the invocation, Ms. Green. Thank you, President Williams. Uh, if we could all keep the family of Sandra Sandy Logan in our thoughts and prayers, and if we could also give our heartfelt condolences to Rose Marie. Um, she's a city employee in the Public Works Department who lost her mother recently. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Matz. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, hold on. Before we get started tonight, there were several inquiries, more than several, um, numerous emails, numerous telephone calls regarding the Third Street removal of stop signs. I just want to say that uh, regarding the recent inquiries, the removal of stop signs and residential handicap parking, the city of Harrisburg, city council, the city engineer, and city solicitor are now reviewing the city's obligations, use, and placement of signage on our streets. And this is to satisfy public safety concerns reasonable accommodation requests, and the regulatory compliance that we are instructed. Stop signs are being removed on portions of North Third Street as newly configured curb lines are being installed in those, lo those locations. But keep in mind that any proposed permanent changes to the city traffic control map will be the subject of public meetings before the city council in accordance with the city code. So in saying that, we will not do anything until it comes before city council. We are having a meeting August the 20th, 2019 here in Harrisburg City Council Chambers at 530 for the public to address concerns and issues they may have on removal of stop signs in that location. And that, I'm going to move on under communications. Mr. Wayne Martin, who is our engineer here at the city of Harrisburg, is going to address the mayor's statement on requesting an RFI for the Capital Regional Water. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to clarify uh, what the request for letter of interest is and, and is not. Um, as stated in the notice, of, so it's a letter of interest 2019-01. Uh, it involved the acquisition of the potential acquisition of water and wastewater system. As stated in the notice, that was not a bid or a request for proposal. That was an invitation uh, to see if there was interest in the acquisition of the system. It just begins a due diligence period, a due diligence period that we felt the need to publicly disclose because of what we proved individuals that the administration, uh, Capital Region Water, um, city council members who's ever involved in the interview process will be talking to private uh, companies. We've already spoken with uh, the PUC. Thank you. The PUC about the matter uh, and gained as much information as we could about um, the documents that have uh, already been filed, the acquisitions that have already happened under the new, under the new law. Um, taking a step back, um, Section 1329 was adopted on April 14, 2016, uh, signed by Governor Wolf on that date, and that was uh, the PUC is allowed to utilize fair market value when acquiring uh, water and wastewater systems. So both the seller and the buyer are allowed to use fair market value. Previously, um, it was the depreciated original um, cost of the system. So the costs, the, the, the 
transactions are, have increased uh, such that uh, some municipalities, including um, Steelton, Scranton, uh, New Garden Township was the first to actually go through the process, um, have, have already filed the paperwork to trans, um, transfer those assets. We have a lot of complicated um, legal documents, of course. We have the consent decree with the EPA, um, other documents that would have to be explored. All we're doing at this time is gathering information. Uh, myself, the administration makes, can make no opinion about whether it's a good um, deal because we haven't done any, uh, we haven't done the necessary research. There's a valuation that would have to be done by an approved professional, both by the seller and the buyer. Um, that has not been completed. So all we're doing at this point is determining if there is interest, what a transaction might look like, and uh, ultimately it would be a, a city council's decision um, and other parties, the EPA and, and uh, Department of Justice, as I mentioned. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Martin. I Thank just you. want to make sure that the public is aware of the fact that uh, city council is certainly involved in the discussions on the capital regional water transaction that the mayor is thinking about. And before we can do that, we want to make sure that all the legal technicalities are, are taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. And for those who did not hear it again, please keep in mind, if you're here tonight to discuss the stop sign removal on 3rd Street, it will have to come before City Council before any decision is being made on that. Moving on to courtesy of floor, I will now open up the, the mic to anyone who would like to come to the mic. Please do so now. I am starting to my right. Good evening. My name is Melanie Cook. I'm a resident of the city of Harrisburg. I live on North 3rd Street, not in the area where the signs were being removed, but needless to say, as a concerned citizen who has some scope of interest beyond the six blocks or two blocks on which my house is located, um, I found it appalling that a sign came up less than a week ago that indicates that the stop signs will be permanently removed in August. So I am very thankful to hear uh, President Williams indicate that no action will be taken before uh, council can vote on it. The question that I have, however, is how does this keep happening over and over and over again? Just in this pre-meeting or special session meeting, there are at least four instances where things are brought before council at what appears to be the 11th hour. There is no notice to council about a request for letters of interest. Those citizens who are on whatever happy little list that enabled me to get an email about it, and of course I'm thinking this is something council has known about and has not taken any action to inform the public, so the first person, council person I see, I'm inquiring. Lo and behold, that person had no information about it either. Now how does a city government make a determination that it should explore the possibility of selling a valuable asset at like water and sewer and not bother to inform the people we elect to make a decision as to whether that is or is not a good idea and is in our best interest. Thank not you. to mention that there was no effort to notify the citizens. Mm -hmm. That is an appalling lack of respect for you as city council members and for us as taxpayers. We can't have a government that seems to function with one person or a group of people making a decision on behalf of everybody else and hoping they can get the decision mm -hmm. snuck through before anybody else notices. So we have the stop sign. We have the situation with the, the request for letters of intent. It, it, it just goes on and on and on. The, the other meeting opened. One group didn't know that the special session was being held. If you go on the city's website, it's very clear how no one would know what's going on. You can't find a calendar of events that clearly lays out anything. And no matter how many times you speak and request, that the, the website be opened up, that, that communications be made more available, nothing happens. So if you are not a type of person or, or have the time and effort to put the effort into finding out about all these issues, you have virtually no knowledge of what's going on. So on one hand, you have a request for a letter of interest. At the exact same time, CRW is holding public meetings to discuss 
a, a stormwater issue. So you're there attempting to get clarification on the stormwater fees, and that's a whole separate argument, which I believe the city council needs to have a specific public meeting to address. I think it's an excellent idea to do one on CDBG, because we as citizens have a right to know how this federal block money is used in our community. Mm -hmm. And if you as council members are getting the breakdown, now let me make this very clear, I think it's an absolute step in the right direction to revise the protocol so that the categories in which various monies can be used and the standards for allotting the, the, the monies is made much more clear. Because if you've watched that procedure the last two or three years, you're like, how on earth are these decisions being made as to who gets what? And the categories as to what's doing what just don't seem to gel. So I do support that. But to have that rushed in again at the 11th hour just leaves people with absolutely no faith in, in the governing process. Because right now it doesn't appear that we're being governed. It appears that there is a reaction to this person doing that and this person doing this. It's almost like it's a chess match. And you have to catch it and block it or somebody's running away with the game. And that is not the government that we are going to allow to operate in this city. Now, I do want to say a positive thing, which quite frankly, I really intended to start out with, um, and recognize uh, Council Member Green, who was one of the participants at a panel that occurred uh, a couple of weeks ago relating to the possibility of bringing forward a police advisory committee. Now, from what I was able to hear and what I've heard in the past, this is the subject that keeps popping up, keeps popping up, but it takes a tragedy or some egregious violation of human conduct, let alone police conduct, to bring it to the forefront. So I do hope that we didn't have that meeting solely for that issue to rescind back into darkness. We had the DA, we had a whole host of other representatives who made it very clear while they could not necessarily get on board with a review committee, they certainly could support an advisory committee. And I think it's critical that we begin in that positive direction. Thank you. <clears throat> and My name is Robert Candidate uh, Mr. Here Kennedy, in Harrisburg. Before, before you speak, please, I just wanted to address some questions for her. Okay. I'm an answer to her. Yeah. Uh, let me assure you that this city council is made aware of anything that goes on in the city of Harrisburg. I'm not apologizing for the mayor of this city because I do meet with him and I'm just sorry that he had an opportunity to expose some of the things that we went over in our meeting. I did meet with every member of this council and I addressed 16 issues and included in those issues was the possibility of doing an RFP for the Capital Regional Water. So we were aware, but the mayor went gun ho and made it public before I had an opportunity to meet with each of the council members. Now, I can't meet three at a time because it's against the Sunshine Law, so I had to meet with them two at a time. So maybe I met two this day and two the next day. So before I had an opportunity to address all the issues that we discussed, him and I, in his office, he went ahead and went public with this without giving, us, giving me an opportunity to talk to the council members. So I do have to say on our, on our account that we were aware of it, but after the fact. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I was not aware of that at yes, all. You, so no. Not before I addressed it with you. I did address. No, I found out through the newspaper. Yeah. I mean, no. that's, it was simultaneous. I, think I mean, that's yeah, point. after, yeah, it was, I said that. The mayor said, went ahead and said it before I met with you. When I met with no, you, it was you one just of the said issues. You, you just said that you m told us and we knew about it and the mayor wasn't supposed to go public with it. I did not know about this because there are a lot of issues. Ms. With Daniels, I, let work. me say this again. I met with the mayor on Thursday. After that, I arranged a meeting with each of you council members two at a time. He went ahead and went public, yes. along with the Penn Live and Patriot News, to put it out there before I had an opportunity to tell each and every so one of you. So you can't speak for all of council. You can speak for yourself. Well, I'm saying to, I'm speaking on behalf. You just of said council members were all included. I was not. Included. Well, not in the meeting. I met included with me meeting with you and letting you know that I met with the mayor to inform you. I'm sorry that he went ahead prior to that before I met with you. 
Mr. Kennedy. Okay. Okay, as I stated, my name is Robert Kennedy here in Harrisburg. And I came here today to talk about a recovery walk and recovery day that we have coming up, uh, along with the county, actually, have coming up the 1st of uh, September for the walk on City Island. And the 28th at the reservoir, we're going to have the uh, recovery day. Now, I'm not going to get in detail because uh, I'm not, not at liberty to take what the county gonna do in the next few weeks anyway, okay? okay. And the other thing I wanna tell you about is uh, a, a state vet net social training and development lead and seed community center that we're gonna be uh, opening on the hill. Now, I've, I ran programs with the county from 2011 until 2017 when I resigned. I was the CEO of uh, the after school program of faith based committee. Otherwise, the bottom line is I work with the community a lot. And what I noticed uh, in 2011, when the uh, governor held all the funds up for social services, we were struggling for funds. So we had a meeting with all the uh, legislators, uh, the director of children and youth of welfare, director and all that. And what we decided to do is come up with some initiatives that we could run because we didn't have the funds. So we we uh, did surveys, we found out that we had need to address the issue of at-risk youth, the homelessness, okay, and then several other things. So we started writing programs for those initiatives, but because we didn't have the funds, uh, we didn't get the people that we needed to really help run the program. Now, I mentioned the multicultural. When I was run running the school program, we worked with the Muslim in Stilton, we work with the uh, Jewish community, and we work with all the other kinds because under the 21st grant, the school district can only run, uh, run program in the Harrisburg School. Title V, you can only run program in South County Schools. So what I'm saying, the grants that the program have, I mean programs in school, you can only go to that school. So what I did, select churches that we could bring kids from all over the Tri-County area. And that's why we was with the, with the different uh, races, ethnicities, you know, and I noticed today the issue we're having now is, uh, and I want to thank City Council for so, supporting all the resources. The, the issue we're having today is we're not working together as a community. There are so many programs out here. So I'm not going to go into detail because everybody knows a church or some group got a program. But are we working together? So that's what the uh, social service, I mean, social community center is going to be about on the hill. We're also doing the gardening. We're going to take some of these lots that look like a mess all over Harrisburg and teach people how to grow food and all that. Now, and I won't go on after this. The issue we're having in our country today, and I think a lot of you know, we say it's mental illness. But how do mental illness start? The reason we're going to get in food, many issues of mental illness start for a lack of mal malnutrition. We see we have mortality rates from mom because she's not eating properly or she's not balancing the food properly properly. So we need to start back in the nutritional field, back into the homes, before we address some of these other issues, because what we're looking at is the smoke. But the fire is the start of those issues, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, nutritional health is one of the things we're going to be focused on in the center. Not, so I'm just asking for everybody's support. Nobody wants to touch the Allison Hill. That is the most diverse area we have in Harrisburg. I'm out there working with the Muslim, I'm working with the African, I'm working with the, the uh, Hispanic community, I'm working with the Vietnamese, because I'm versed in those languages and their culture. And they respect us because we, if you have to take the time to learn a person's culture and learn their language, they know you respect them. Okay. Now, I walk out there 24-7. I know you guys have been hearing about the shooting and all that. Right. But you don't understand the ones we stop. We stop people from being radicalized. Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm really going to stop after this. I don't know if you remember two years ago when Mr. L. Moffey went shot at the state police uh, at the Capitol. And he went on the hill and got killed. I was working with him because I speak Arabic. The issue was he tried to fit in because I was at the uh, mission running some of the, helping with some of the drug and alcohol program, and I met him at the Arabic store on 6th Street. We was talking about some of the issues and stuff, and he was trying to fit in with the conversation, and he couldn't articulate English that well, so I started rattling off in, in uh, Arabic. So that's how I met him. The day of the shooting, he was looking for me. And I don't know if you guys seen it, I was on the news. 
Now listen, if, if there was a place that he could come, this is what we're missing in this area. If there was a place that people can come when they have issues that we can work with, we have so many professionals, we have 90 recovery specialists in Dauphin County. We have so many specialists that can work with these issues, but we don't have a central location that they can come to. The other problem is silos. Everybody got a program going, but what's working? So we just ask you people to please come at least the 28th of, of uh, September at the, at the uh, Reservoir Park because a lot of those issues are going to be addressed out there and support the center that we're getting ready to open on the hill in Midtown as well. So any, any, uh, any information you need, you can uh, email me at stayvetnet at gmail.com. That's S-T-A-Y-V-E-T-N-E-T -E at gmail.com. It's an organization of veterans working with other organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right. Kennedy. Thank you. Anyone else to my right, please? Uh, you had a question? Okay. Um, Ron Johnson, um, chair of the Neighborhood Square Watch Group, liaison for concerned neighbors. The first thing I have to say is we watched the news the other morning, and the police are touting about the police presence in downtown. What about Allison Hill, where people actually do live? There's a lot of good things going on up on Allison Hill. We have Wild Heart Ministries. We have the Tri-Community Action Commission. They're cleaning up all over Allison Hill. But it seems like we don't never see no police. And they're talking about they need the citizens to work with them. Well, y'all know I've been working for over a decade trying to clean up the Allison Hill community and nothing to avail because I'm sitting on my porch with Blake and we're watching him pick up, people pick up drugs. And he's videotaping, turning them over. And you know, it's, it's just crazy. My fear is that when these kids are gonna step on a needle or find another body in the alley like they did last year, I do not want that to happen. That's why me and Jane started coming down here in April to formulate a plan with the council so that we could eliminate all of this. The second thing is, Getting parking enforcement up there to where we're at, up on top of the hill, is like, I've had some good things going on since the last time before y'all broke for the summer session. The um, property owner at 1845, 47, and 49 Market Street asked me that I want to manage her property. I told her, oh no, I got too much on my plate as it is. But it seems like the gentleman was renting parking spaces so the, neighbor, the, the tenants didn't have to park on Market Street. So now that he got told on, They've moved all the cars out of the yard. He no longer can make this money, but they're parking on Zarker Street and blocking John Alley. And I've been telling, calling down the parking enforcement and telling them, if y'all want to make some revenue, come up there. We're not getting none of the city services like this uh, street cleaning things because there's cars lined all up and down on the side streets, on Zarker Street, Chestnut Street, Bellevue Street. And see, everybody calls me, because they know I always run my mouth. So I might as well do it now and get it all over with so we can get some kind of you know, uh, resolve. So please take that into consideration. Thank you, sir. We will. Um, Mr. Kennedy, I think Mr. Matson wanted to give you some information about the United Way. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned if there's a central hub. There's actually a hotline called 211 uh, that United Way provides uh, statewide, actually, where if you know of anybody in crisis, they can call that number and then they can get connected to local nonprofits or government services. It's 211, like 911. And if you have any other additional questions, I'll be here to um, st afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, um, my name's Laura Harding. I live at 2246 North 3rd Street. Um, that's at the intersection of Emerald Street where the stop sign is slated to be removed. Um, first, um, I heard your opening remarks, um, Chairwoman, and it seems like um, you indicated that the stop sign is being removed for Capital Region water work that they're doing on the um, on the street there? No configuration of the street. Oh, OK. Because no, the work was already completed for the bump outs. Right. And um, that stop sign was removed in the beginning of July and returned July 4th due to multiple accidents that occurred at that intersection. So it does seem like this stop sign removal and the other one at Calker Street is going to be permanent. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. It's seems like there is a lack of transparency as one of our other neighbors indicated earlier in her comments and it seems a little bit disingenuous that we're not getting the answers and we're getting them again at the 11th hour on the 20th which is three days before 
um, the stop sign is going to be removed. There are multiple playgrounds there. I see kids running across the street every day, multiple times a day, um, without checking and looking both ways. Um, I don't, I'm told, or the rumor is, that it has to do with the Second Street two-way conversion project, mm -hmm. and that was not given, that information was not given to us that traffic would be pushed down Third Street. Mm -hmm. um, there are zero playgrounds on Second Street. There are zero schools on Second Street. Sure. Third Street is arguably the street with the most pedestrian traffic because of the stores. People come there to go shopping. I live near the Family Dollar, and there's restaurants there that people frequent from all over the city. Everybody comes to eat at Emerald Chinese. Everybody knows people on the West Shore come to eat at Emerald Chinese. I hear about it all the time. So I don't understand why we're getting this information now, why there was no notification. And I do appreciate the fact that you're holding a public comment session on the 20th, but to me, that's too late. Why can't we talk about this now? Children's lives are at risk. Pedestrians' lives are at risk. This is not something to me that is open to debate. It's, it's a no-brainer. Yes. So um, if we can get the truth <laughs> that it has to do with the Second Street Conversion Project, and it's always about, why is it always about improving property values, midtown, downtown, Second Street? When that happens, when property, property values go up after this two-way conversion, are you going to raise taxes for them? Are you going to raise taxes for those properties along Second Street and Front Street? Or is it going to be more status quo? Or is it just to keep making pockets go deeper for the wealthy who live there? What about the rest of the city? What about Allison Hill? There's great places in Allison Hill. You know, there's great places in Uptown. I never see our mayor uptown. I never see him at Family Dollar. I never see him at the Uptown Shopping Center. Where does he buy his liquor? Because that's where I go to buy mine. <laughs> you know? I mean, really, really, I see him at the Broad Street Market all the time, right. going to get that pizza. You know, I, it's, it's, we can read between the lines. Okay. I've lived there for 15 years. You know, it's his Mayor Reed 2.0. He ran his campaign, our current mayor ran his campaign against Mayor Reed, but he's doing exactly the same, same stuff. Mayor okay. Reed 2.0. Okay. Thank just, you. Wait, before you go, just a clar clarification. I believe we agree that no signs will come down until after that public right. hearing occurs. So that's what we are, I know. And then why don't the signs come down until I, we well have the meeting? Believe me, I want to address that too, because like you, I live on Third Street and I have the same issues. So like if you want to know the problems in the city, I find out along with all of you. So that is part of the issues that we want to address. But I, from my understanding, we've agreed to have the public hearing. No signs will come down prior to that so we can get this ironed out to figure out what's going on. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that. So that's why I'd encourage people to come back out again uh, along with me um, mm -hmm. to talk about what's happening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> thank you uh, for giving me right. just jump right in. Sorry, just... were, you, were you ready? Yes, yeah, so go ahead. I just, uh, okay. I, I wanted to make sure there was nothing else Mr. Allen wanted to say before, you know. Sure, of course. You, you uh, start speaking. My name is Joseph Gauger. Uh, I live on the 1700 block of Green Street. Um, I, uh, I, it would be nice if that stop sign at third and Kelker remained there. Uh, I guess I'll come to the next meeting if I can. Um, I just wanted to ho speak out early and often uh, against the idea of privatizing the city water authority with the understanding that this is kind of the first, like, you know, the first step to that process, that potential process that, pu that the public knows about. Um, I'm categorically against the idea of privatizing the water authority. I don't understand how privatization in any way improves public services in general. It just leads to shaving off corners in order for a private entity to make a profit. Uh, I don't see how it benefits us. I don't see how any of the other privatized services that I deal with uh, are any better or benefit me. I don't see how uh, parking uh, or revenue collection being in private hands helps us. Um, I would like to suggest, I would like to take this opportunity to suggest that we move in the other direction and have more public oversight or hopefully like more direct municipal control of the water resources in Harrisburg. Um, as I was Doing a little bit of background research on this subject, I found to my horror that there's actually a huge deficit of resources at the federal and state level for water safety testing. 
I think the Penn Live investigation this year found that the average workload for a water safety inspector in Pennsylvania is three times the average for the country at large, which means that mm -hmm. there are public health authorities here in Pennsylvania that are giving us one third as much attention as the average American gets. So that is terrifying to me, and I would just like to suggest, I don't know what this would look like, but I would like us to move in the direction of having more public oversight and more you know, water safety testing. Um, you know, uh, if the issue is uh, an increased uh, fee, uh, you know, do I want to pay another $72 a year? Not necessarily, but I also don't want to get E. coli, and I don't want my neighbor's kids to get lead poisoning. Right. All right, thank you. All right. Very nice. Yeah. Great. And bring, bring that uh, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, I wanted to keep talking about water privatization. I'm a new Harrisburg resident. I just bought a house on Third Street. Could um, you give us your name, please? Catherine Lally. Thank you. Um, nobody has heard of Harrisburg in my life. I'm from Baltimore. Um, and I always tell people it's this amazing town with this beautiful river. And it's such an asset to Harrisburg to have the Susquehanna and privatizing the water will give a private company control mm -hmm. of all of that runoff and any of the water in Harrisburg. And water is such a crucial part of what this city is and what the city has to offer. Um, I'd like to be able to swim in the Susquehanna someday and not um, sell it off to a private corporation. Thank That's you. All. Thanks. And welcome. Uh, hello, my name is Ryan, and I live in a region that would be affected by selling off the water. I previously lived in Pittsburgh for nearly a decade where Viola poisoned the residents, the same people that poisoned all the residents in Flint. And I don't see the guy that was explaining that, but I would like to ask him two questions. How can he guarantee Viola that has a criminal case against them in Pittsburgh does not come here and poison our residents? And how do they not happen? Um, to what's happening to Milltown with Suez? And also, does he believe that profit grows on trees? Or does he believe that all of us that pay water are gonna get fleeced by whoever they sell it off to? All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else to my right? Anyone in the middle? Good evening, Council. Good evening, members of the public. My name is Sheila Dow Ford. I live at 2033 Bellevue Road, and I stand this evening in support of my colleague, Melanie Cook, and the others who have spoken regarding the potential selling off of the Water Authority. I have a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I think you all were quite elegant, eloquent and elegant in your statements, and I won't try to, in any way, shape, or form, um, add to them except to add perhaps a, a slight nuance. Um, the work I do in my professional capacity brings me into contact with many of you who are um, members of our govern, government, our governing bodies, with members of, of the city government. And I enjoy those working relationships a great deal. Um, what I have to say in no way is meant to impede upon or to undermine those relationships because I value them. And I think that we have good working relationships. That is what I want to talk about. The need for communities to commune, to communicate. Community, the words, community, commune, together, communicate, to talk to one another. In my view, this is a situation I'm talking about this, um, what I read on Penn Live, which is where apparently most of us got the information, which is shocking. Me too. Okay, Me too. that's pretty shocking. Let's just say that. Um, that is not a reflection of good communication with your neighbors. That is what is required of leaders. You have to talk to the people within your community. This is not a political speech. This is a speech about being a part of a larger group of people who are working towards the same goal. That has not happened here. I don't know what happened. I know that is not what happened. And it makes me annoyed, angry. I'm allowed to get angry. It's part of our emotional makeup. Upset 
But it also makes me question what the motive was behind this. And I don't have the answers. I don't think any of you on city council do. Candidly, I don't think members of city government do. This is an action that requires answers. We deserve answers. Anytime the process of communication is flipped when it comes to government, when the leadership is making decisions alone, without communicating effectively with his or her colleagues, there is a problem. I see a serious problem here. A Couple of other points. I have had occasion to read through many iterations of the Harrisburg Strong Plan over the past couple of days because of some work I'm doing. Under the Strong Plan, which I believe is still in place to a certain degree, I don't know, but under the plan, it is contemplated that this government, the, the city of Harrisburg, and its representative, the mayor, will work in concert with Capital Region Water to affect good governance around the operation of the city's water and other items. I don't know how what has happened here fits in with that. I'm confused. Somebody help me. Me too. <laughs> I also don't understand the legality. These are the most basic questions. The legality of this request, this RFI. I don't understand it. It has to be placed in a context. It should not be um, a Monday morning or a Friday evening surprise. That is not the way those of us who have worked hard to ensure that we have better governance in this city. That is not the way we want to see things happen. We don't want anything to go down like that. Am I clear? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Anyone else in the middle? <laughs> I thought someone was coming. I thought they were coming to the mic from that side. And I invite you all please to come when the mayor and the administration has a meeting regarding the CRW, RFI, okay? Please come. For every statement that you made today, I would like to, for them to address and answer all your questions. What is the meeting? They haven't decided on a meeting as of today, but we will be informing you of that meeting. Do you do you have any idea? No idea. Do okay. You? Okay. The the um, responses are due third week of September, I believe. When what? The actual letters of interest are due the 20th of September from the RFI. So whatever comes in with that trigger a timetable to have a discussion. I would think that he would have a meeting before that to answer some questions that the community has, um, Mr. Grover, because as you can see, everybody is surprised about how they found out about this CRW RFI. I just want to make sure that we understand that the, the, the information that we're gathering is really just that, is gathering information about uh, the water system and um, any potential uh, uh, disposition of assets. But it, it is not, we have not decided what we're going to do. I think it's part of a, our due diligence uh, with regard to the water system uh, and the, any impact it could um, have on the citizens of Harrisburg. So this, uh, this is the beginning part of the process. Um, and there may be no process after we get some information. Uh, once we have the information, it, it, it may go somewhere, it may not. I just want to be clear. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, just a minute. I'll let you talk in a minute, just a minute. Are you done, Mr.? Yes. Okay. I understand that uh, what the mayor is attempting to do, but I think, uh, and, and I was very, very upset about this uh, when I heard this on the news as well because I already knew. I think he should have met with uh, city council and at that point had public meetings to address the fact that 
what was their concerns or issues or what were their feelings about doing an RNFI for the CRW. Not put it out there publicly and no accountability of, as to answer any of the questions that this community might have or council may have. I think he went about it the wrong way. Understood. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, excuse me, do you want to speak? I was just saying that. Could you come to the mic, please, and, and address? And, and any time you want to speak from here Sorry. on. Um, no, no, any time, just put your hand up and I'll acknowledge you. Yeah. I don't want anyone to be hollering out. Thanks, I'm new. Okay, that's I'm all right. I'm new and I'm that's excitable. That's all right. <laughs> um, I guess what you were trying to say was that you want to get these responses back and then evaluate them. But as I understand, the responses you're getting are just figures that people would want to buy our water. Right. And what we're saying is that there isn't an amount high enough for us to sell such a wonderful asset to Harrisburg off to a private corporation. Like, I don't think we need to even see what those offers are. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Why? My name's Evelyn Hunt. My question is why? Is there a problem with Capital Regional Water in the, what they are doing? And if so, why do we, the public, not know what this problem is? Why lose another one of our assets in this city? We've already lost disposal. We've already lost parking. We didn't lose disposal. We have sanitation. I mean, okay. we lost uh, the where they the incinerator. The incinerator. That, that's where they okay. dispose it. Sure. Okay. And we lost parking. Do we want to lose water? We don't own water. We do not own capital. Okay. Water. But do we want to give, make it okay. private? Okay. That's the question. That's the question. And if we don't own it, why? How are we involved in this? It, how does, if, we, if the city does not own Capital Regional Water, I'm not sure what that relationship is, but if you don't own it, why are you going out asking other people, do they have an interest in owning it? Oh, I think you should ask the mayor that. Why is he taking <laughs> that? <laughs> The position that he's taken to uh, okay. privatize the Capital Region of Water, since he's the one who put the RFI out there. And the timing. Mm -hmm. I've been at a couple of Capital Regional Water's board meetings, and the mayor has been very outspoken about in being opposed to Capital Regional Water's plans on uh, increasing um, costs for stormwater management, where in the past, the p we homeowners carried that whole burden. But now, Capital Regional Water is saying companies, places like um, Klein Plaza, uh, the um, state complexes, all of those places are going to have to help pay for stormwater management. He has gone to a, a number, uh, at least two meetings that I know about, and he has opposed this. And I'm back to the question, timing. This appears to look bad for this uh, RFI to come out as he's opposing what Capital Regional Water is doing. And I agree with you. Those are my comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the middle, please? Hello, I'm Penny. Uh, I live on 2nd Street in Uptown. Uh, I'm not much of a public speaker, so keep that in mind. Um, I understand that you were aware of it and you were going to tell the rest of the council, but he kind of wild west you, beat you to the punch. And I also understand that he's supposed to be going out and just collecting inquiries about is this a possibility. But for the public, I feel like it's almost selling cuts of meat before everyone even knows the cow was slaughtered. And I think if you have this amount of people here on this issue, just based on some small little article on Penn Live already, that even before this meeting comes, there's enough people real mad about it. 
and not happy about this even being a possibility. So for those of us, probably including myself, that won't even be able to make it to this meeting when he finally does show up, because it'll probably be sprung on us, uh, I'm just letting you know my position, Penny, that I'm not about it, and I feel like there's a lot of people that can't be here and won't be able to be there that also are not about it. Thank you. You're welcome. And I can assure you that we probably won't have one meeting. We probably need to have about two or three. Anyone else in the middle? Anyone to the left? Okay, thank you. Moving on to the legislative session agenda. Approval of minutes. Approve the special legislative session minutes of July 9, 2019. Council members, are there any admissions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, minutes are approved as such. Moving on to reports of committees. Uh, we do not have a um, report ready for Mr. Madsen. Our nor Mr. Majors is not here tonight, so they will do the report at the next special legislative session, our next legislative session, I'm sorry. Ordinance for first reading, none. Moving on to ordinance for amendment. Excuse me, he has an update. Okay. Oh, you do? You do have yeah. the information? Oh, I thought you said, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you said you didn't have it ready. No, 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 no. Okay, all right, go ahead. It's all fresh in my mind. All right, report from Chair Matson on the work session of August 13, 2019. Yes, so uh, the Economic Development Committee had a uh, work session to discuss bills two, three, four, and resolution 51 largely in regards to the community development block grant monies. Uh, the administration provided a breakdown of the process and fielded questions from council. There have been a number of changes to the process. Council got clarification on HUD's deadlines, the scoring, uh, subrecipients, a uh, breakdown of the budget. And it should be noted for the record, the approval of this is time sensitive. Um, September the 10th at 6 p.m. at Public Works, there will be a mandatory meeting for subrecipients. I strongly encourage as chair that anybody that is interested in learning about the process and the breakdown of the scoring, please attend this meeting on September the 10th. And um, with that, I would uh, encourage my colleagues to support the bills and resolutions. I'm sorry, may I please? Interrupt. I yep. was just informed that we tentatively schedule that September 10th, the same day as the city council meeting. No, we I, cancel the meeting. We're we, doing we yours. Schedule. Oh, okay. Sorry, I know. Blab her mouth over here. Oh, okay, great. Okay, I was going to reschedule, but that's perfect. Okay. I mean, just, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we are <laughs> confirming <laughs> September 10th. We did reschedule that for September the 17th is okay. the next legislative session meeting for uh, city council. Perfect. So we will confirm that the mandatory. Um, Subrecipient applicant workshop is September 10th, at 6 p.m. Oh, oh, I thought you said 5.30. 6 p.m. Okay. Want to give people time to get there from work. 6 okay. p.m. at the Public Works facility. Thank 18, you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I just wanted to, okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Madsen. Moving on for ordinance for first reading, we have none. Is that okay? Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on for ordinance for amendment. Bill 2, 2019. Are there, are there going to be amendments? No. If they're not, no. we can just no, there's go no to final amendments. passage. Pardon me? I said if there's going to be no amendments, we can move to final okay. passage. Okay. <laughs> two, bill 2, 3, and 4. We have no amendments at this time. Moving on to ordinance or final passage, Bill 2, 2019. Mr. Petrosky, read that into uh, yeah, bill, record. Bill 2 of 2019 was moved by Mr. Madison, seconded by Ms. Bowers. It's an ordinance appropriating community development block grant program funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for fiscal year 2019 and authorizing expenditure of such funds. Council members, any questions or comments on Bill 2? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Yes. Bill 2 passes. Thank you. Moving on to Bill 3. Bill 3 of 2019 was moved by Mr. Madsen, seconded by Ms. Bowers. It's an ordinance appropriating emergency solutions grant program funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for fiscal year 2019 and authorizing expenditure of such funds. Council member, any questions or comments on Bill 3? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Yes. Bill 3 passes. Moving on to Bill 4, 2019. Bill 4 of 2019 was moved by Mr. Madsen, seconded by Ms. Bowers. It's an ordinance appropriating home investment partnership program funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development 
for fiscal year 2019 and authorizing expenditure of such funds. Any questions, comments on Bill 4? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Yes. Bill 4 passes. Thank you. Moving on to Resolution 51. Resolution 51 of 2019 was moved by Mr. Madsen, seconded by Ms. Bowers. It's a resolution approving the fiscal year 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG Home Investment Partnership Program, Home and Emergency Solutions Grant Program, ESG, along with the 2019 2020 Annual Action Plan. Council members, any questions or comments? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 51 passes. Moving on to Resolution 53. Resolution 53 of 2019 was moved by Mr. Majors, seconded by Mr. Allen. It's a resolution te technically amending resolution 17 of 2018 by including an additional parcel to be acquired by the city of Harrisburg pursuant to, pursuant to chapter 128 of the third class city code for the construction, erection, and extension of a permanent public works facility. Any questions or comments on resolution 53? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 53 passes. Moving on to old business, council members, any old business? Moving on to new business. Council members, any new business? Okay, I just don't want to take a few minutes to make some comments based on um, some of the public comment and some of my feelings of things that have occurred over the summer while we were on hiatus. Um, but first, thanks to Melanie and Sheila for, uh, um, you know, for us to effectively manage the comings and goings of our government requires us to work together. Um, we are simply the checks and balances for the administration as a legislative function. That's what we aim to do. The challenge that I've had um, historically and even recently, especially in light of some of the events, is that there is no true collaboration that occurs. Um, my feeling often is that there is an arbitrary decision that's made and thrust out there in the universe, and that we are then also forced into reaction mode to both respond, acknowledge, mm -hmm. and try to form our own opinion about what's going on. Um, in the two instances, particularly with the issue with Capital Region Water, I too, like everybody else, question kind of the motives of why we're doing it right now, what's the end game, what are we trying to accomplish, and I would have much preferred that to be a conversation that would, be, would have been interactive in nature. Um, I do not know why these things happen like this time and time again, but every single time they occur, we see this outpouring of a negative reaction to it. We often have to walk back something, change a process, and then react and do it later, when quite honestly we could just figure out how to address something in a collaborative way first time around, we'd be much better off. Secondary to things like even removing stop signs and things like that, we are living in a community that is impacted by the decisions that we can and do make on a regular basis. So we cannot make arbitrary decisions that could have an impact. Uh, when I saw that on Third Street uh, about the signs coming down, my heart sank because every single day that I live on Third Street, I watch people fly by and right at the next intersection there's a, there's a playground where children play. Mm -hmm. I watch as people park, as we continue to grow and parking becomes more of an issue, that people get hit as they come out of alleyways and cause tra traffic congestion. These have real life impact to things that people are doing. When we don't allow public input, when we don't allow public comment, and when we make decisions in a vacuum, and maybe they're not in a vacuum, but guess what we don't know? Because we're only finding out after the fact. Um, these are things that really concern me on a regular basis. I look forward to having the public hearing that I found out about tonight to be able to discuss the things on Third Street. And you know what impacts me on Third Street, but I know there are things that happen all over the city to impact all of us from where we live and the neighborhoods that we live in, but we need to do a better job of communicating and collaborating and arriving at decisions that really truly do benefit everybody. Not one person on this body or in the administration has the ability to know an exact change that would benefit all of us unilaterally. We have a collaborative method. That's what government is about. And my only challenge going back, and I know the mayor is not here, so Mark, it falls on you to be able to convey this, and Neil and um, everybody else, is that we cannot continue down this path. We must work together in a collaborative fashion. We want to work together in a collaborative fashion. I do not want to be in a position to make unilateral decisions, nor do I want the mayor to make unilateral decisions. If we're going to have good government, it requires us to work together. And I think that 
this debacle with the CRW is a perfect example. And I actually applaud Wanda as soon as she had the meeting with the mayor to try to schedule time with each of us. But it didn't matter because by the time we met, it was out there into the universe and we were all getting calls. We had no input on it. We had no way to form an opinion on it one way or the other or even form a response on it. We are put on the back end of having to respond to yet again something that the mayor has decided, decreed, or wanted to make happen. And it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so I remain really frustrated by this. And I thank everybody for coming out tonight to talking about this because I think it really sheds light on if our community is in the dark and we are in the dark, nothing good is coming of that. Um, and we need to do a better job. Um, communication from the city to the residents has to improve. Communication from city administration to city council has to improve. And it cannot be one-way communication. It has to be something that works with us working in tandem and coming up with solutions collectively and being able to do that. That is what we were elected to do, and we take this responsibility very seriously. And I applaud my colleagues. I've never worked, I mean, we have a, a deeply intelligent, engaged council that has an ability and an understanding to affect change, to bring about solutions, just allow that seat at the table. That's what we are here for. Um, and I don't want to say this again and again and again, but I can't beat a dead horse. I'm tired of this happening, and I'm tired of being put on the background. Again, much like my colleagues in council, we are the ones getting calls and emails and stopped on the street. And we look like idiots sometimes, and we're like, gosh, I don't know. I found out like you when I read the Penn Live article. I have no idea what the mayor's intent is with this. Look how horrible that sounds to all of us to be able to have to respond to that. We need better communication, and if this was ever an example of it, tonight should show an example. And I hope the mayor watches back the tape of tonight to hear what every person had to say, because it goes to show exactly why this has been a problem. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm pretty sure for now. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Um, I concur with everything that you said, Mr. Allen. And, and I, again, I just apologize to the public because I was not aware of the fact that the mayor was going to come out with that announcement. Uh, at our meeting, he had stated that he was thinking about it, but he did not say that he was going to move forward with looking for RFI. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't have an opportunity to get to the council members quicker because we all had to arrange a schedule that was appropriate for everyone, that worked for everyone. Uh, all I can say is that uh, the buck stops here though. It stops here. Anything that the administration needs to do and wants to do has to come through city council and then it has to come through me. And then it has to come through this as a council as a whole. But I put the things on the agenda so he needs to understand anything that he wants to do has to come through me. I apologize for the stop signs as well because I wasn't aware of that until I got 10 calls today and about 15 emails regarding the Third Street stop signs. Uh, I don't travel down Third Street because each time I travel down there, my car is usually hit on the side. So I don't go down Third Street and I've been trying to get the administration to acknowledge the fact that Third Street needs to be parking on one side only because when the buses come down, they seem to hit the sides of people mirror as well. Uh, so I am gonna move on. I did move on that quickly. I called the meeting immediately with the engineer. Him and I went in discussion. Then I called, we talked with Neil, who is our solicitor. So there are legal technicalities that we can look at with the option of not putting a stop sign or removing the stop sign on Third Street. So keep in mind that everything that happens in the city, if I'm not aware of it on the same day, Someone calls me or someone texts me about what happens and I do Im take immediate action as Mark can, can confer with me because I usually call him right away and say, what's happening, Mark? Let me know. What's the status? What are we going to do? So do I, I not? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, with, so I, I was not in your meeting about CRW, but no, with you regard to the, the Third Street, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll check back again with uh, Wayne, city engineer, but it's my understanding that there were um, a series of public meetings held about it. In 2015. So I, I, so I just wanna, I, I, wanna, I wanna make sure that um, when, he, when, when I was told that, what the, uh, what the events around that were, the dates and things like that, and make sure uh, there, what was discussed. Uh, but I want to make sure that uh, you understand that we, um, and the, the, the communication between the administration and city council, um, we will uh, double our efforts in, in, in uh, trying to reestablish those lines. 
Uh, I think individually uh, between uh, certain members of council, I've done that, uh, but I want to, it needs to be expanded, and I, and I hear you. Uh, so we'll look forward to, to having this conversation and how we can uh, better communicate. And Mark, I understand that even the, with the Vision Zero, um, and I have a copy of the report here because I did get a copy so I could read. He did, it did state that update all stop and yield sites uh, within the HIN area. Uh, and also remove or replace non-manual or uniform traffic control signs along the HIN. Uh, but I was under the impression before the removal, any signs or displacement of any stop sign, uh, red lights, that we would have public meetings to hear the community's version of, of their opinion of what they feel in that area. So right now, that community on Third Street thinks that the Third Street will be affected by the two-way conversion, that they're going to come mm -hmm. off a of two-way and use that as an alternate route. So, uh, so there's, a, there's a big concern. Yes. And I think that he should have had public meetings, even when he stated in the Vision Zero plan. It states that they will have meetings, but there's been no such meetings. But they've taken the time to have meetings about the conversion of the second street, two-way version. They've had a couple of meetings. All of the uh, residents in attendance didn't even live on Second Street, but they had no meetings for the uptown area for the removal of these signs, and that's my concern. But I think, in fairness, like as council, we voted on the multimodal plan, and they had the map laid out, and we were supposed to ask all of these questions. And you know, when they came, because the whole idea was that. The multimodal plan was would slow things down, so a lot of these stop signs would no longer be needed because instead of being able to speed through third, the way you could before those bump outs came out, those cars are now going slower. So I don't think people spent a lot of time on stop signs because <laughs> when people asked us about it, because like, you know, it, like I don't know, maybe there's a disconnect between what was voted on and what how people understood it to happen, but I don't think that one falls totally on the administration. I think that falls a little bit on well, us Well, it too. does when they, that when they indicate to me that they're going to have meetings and no such meetings were called. I don't have a problem with them devising a zero vision plan, and I was here to vote on that. But when they indicate that they will have additional meetings to address some of these things that they want to implement here, and there's no meetings been called. I do have a problem with that. And that's what I want to focus on is the fact that now they want to take stop signs from a very busy area. And, and my uh, Wayne's response was because there's only 100 cars to travel. I beg to differ with him. There's more than 100 cars that travel down that street. No, I think he said that there's like 800 that th travel on Third Street. And I walk that almost every day because that's how I get my exercise. And there isn't. There aren't that many cars that travel on, even on Third Street. And in Seneca, you can even like double park for a really long time, and there isn't a car that comes down. No, he <laughs> said, don't, I'm not going to confess how I know that. Um, but <laughs> he said, he said that. There but he said, he said for Third Street, uh, it's 800 cars in an eight-hour period. He said there was. He said that there's not 300 vehicles in an eight-hour period. I met with him today. That's Seneca. And no, that's that's Third Street. No, he said eight, it's 800 in eight-hour period. I'm, in an eight-hour period. Sorry, I met 300 in eight-hour period. I'm not going to dispute that because I'm going to say what he. Yeah. I'm, I wrote down what he told me today, and I'm not going to get in debate with you. I know what I wrote down today, and I know what I heard when I one on one meeting with him today. I'm just saying like based but, on my experience okay. just walking. Um, like I walked that let me finish that thing a lot. It's I'm not telling a very you that busy thing. On that bump, area bump alone I asked him about down. excuse me, I'm speaking. I asked him how many uh, vehicle accidents there were. And he said that there was not more than five or more crashes in a twelve month period. Well I begged a different with him because some of the crashes that have that happened there are not reportable or non reportable. So I do have a problem with that. He needs to probably do a better traffic study in that area. And then I'm going to move on because I don't want to get into anything else about the stop signs when we're going to have a meeting next week. Well, so under maybe the, I'm sorry, just under in the preparation, new business. Can I just one comment to that? 
I know, but I, 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 okay. just based on what you said, maybe in preparation for next week's meeting, I think there is a, I think a disconnect between intent when a plan is formulated and the outcome of what happens after bump outs are formed. I'd be very curious. I'm not sure that in certain sections of Third Street that the bump outs have effectively slowed people down okay. um, based on you know, what I can observe. So that would cause some concern to say, if that hasn't been the intended effect of what happened with it, then I would be concerned, and I'd, I'd be interested okay. in seeing what was And I asked you for those that. numbers, yeah. and he's supposed to provide those. We'll be at the meeting next we'll, week. We'll, we'll have the meeting next week. And um, so he's, he's going to provide those he's statistics. He's going to provide those. And at yeah. that time, the residents can ask those necessary questions regarding that. And also, how uh, it factors in for the pedestrians and the bicyclers that, that come in that area during that period, that AR period. I'm moving on to new business. I want to mention that, of course, August 20th, 2019, at 5.30 p.m., it's the meeting at, uh, to, for the removal of stop signs. It's going to be located at the Public Works building. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, at the um, Harrisburg City Council yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But the meeting scheduled for September 10, 2019 is at the Public Works meeting. That's the CDBG. Starts at 6 o'clock p.m. September 17, 2019 is our next legislative session here in Council Chambers. And then September 28th. 12 to 6 p.m., of course, please attend the Reservoir Park uh, function that Mr. Kennedy addressed. Uh, this weekend, August 16th, 17th, 18th, in conjunction with the Harrisburg Housing Authority, the City of Harrisburg Singers Lounge, we're going to have the weekender Friday at the Hall Manor uh, Park, Saturday at Reservoir Park, and Sunday at Reservoir Park. And the three day event is free. Fun, food, and entertainment, and vendors. There is one more day. Okay. There's um, a net worth summit on Thursday. Oh, that's right. I forgot. And about that will network. be held from 5:30 to 9 um, at the Hilton. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot about the net worth. Okay. Did I miss anything on the weekender? No. I think okay. you covered everything. All right. Thank and you. Hang You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else with uh, new business? Hearing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Meetings adjourned.